Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. You're welcome to another exciting episode of IBT Ramadan series. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his endless mercies and for giving us the opportunity to witness this moment. May Allah accept our acts of ibadah and also forgive our shortcomings. My name is Maryam Ibrahim and I have with me Abdurrahman Idris. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, um, it's that time of the month you know, holy month of Ramadan and it's that time in the holy month of Ramadan where we start to see so many unusual faces oh. and you know the tag Ramadan, Ramadan Muslim, Ramadan Muslim is up and about but really we need to have a different mindset as regards this first we need to understand that being able to perform in the first place is due to the grace of Almighty Allah and for those of us that are able to perform it's wrong to you know criticize others or see us see ourselves as being more than of them of course it is really wrong to shame people for trying to get better during this Ramadan. Yeah. I mean, that is what is expected of everyone. Yeah, of everyone. Okay, so this is the time where people get to um, shame others. Oh, she doesn't wear hijab on normal day and this Ramadan and she's already on hijab. Yeah. She doesn't pray and she's praying. Yeah. He, he, he drinks and he's not drinking. I mean, you don't have to shame them. This is the time where they get to be better. Um, and who knows, they could be, this Ramadan could be the turning point yeah. for them to be better Muslims. So yeah. I think that is it. So we'll start with the recitation of the glorious Quran. I hope it touches you. And from there will be the Mufti Menk lecture series, which promises to be inspiring as usual. I hope you find it enlightening. We'll see you right after that. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وإن تبدوا ما في أنفسكم أو تخفوه يحاسبكم به الله فيغفر لمن يشاء ويعذب من يشاء والله على كل شيء قدير آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين صدق الله العظيم
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, we were looking at the surah, surah al-Baqarah, how Allah commences it by mention of the fact that there is no doubt in this book. In it, there is guidance for those who are conscious of Allah, those who develop the correct relationship with Allah. So right at the beginning of the Quran, Allah talks about the fact that you shouldn't doubt the Quran. Where there is doubt, there cannot be healing. Where there is doubt, there will never be hope. So Allah concentrates on the issue of no doubt. This book, there is no doubt in it. It is authentic. It is absolutely correct. Allah says, لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين. In a translation, we could say, there is no doubt in it. There is guidance for those who develop taqwa. And just to recap with what you may know, taqwa is to develop the consciousness of Allah, developing the correct relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is taqwa. So when we say there is no doubt in this book and there is guidance in it for those who have taqwa, it means if we try to develop the correct relationship with Allah, that is the only time we will be able to benefit from revelation and from our relationship with Allah. How will I know what Allah wants from me if I haven't read the Qur'an? And how will the Qur'an impact upon me if I am not interested in developing the correct relationship with Allah or becoming conscious of Allah? So these are all interconnected matters. Remember that your taqwa is closely connected to how you are with the Qur'an. Your guidance is closely connected with your relationship with Allah and your search for guidance. So continue searching and continue pushing yourself to do the right thing. My brother, my sister, you know what is right. You know what is wrong. You have to be strong enough to push yourself to do what you already know is right. And you have to push yourself to protect yourself from what you know is wrong. Simple. That is taqwa, to create a barrier between yourself and the wrath of Allah, the anger of Allah. When we talk of the anger of Allah, generally, we would be conscious of not displeasing Allah so that we don't anger Him because we love Him so much, we don't want Him to be upset with us. So it is actually something born out of love. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and protection. So if you ask yourself, who are those who develop the correct relationship with Allah? Those who have hope always, those whom the verses of the Quran will heal. Remember that. Yes, the verses of the Quran have healing in them, but not just for anyone and everyone. For those who believe in the Quran, they will achieve comfort. They will achieve contentment. Look at what Allah says. الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون. He mentions three beautiful points. He says those who believe in the unseen, they don't have a doubt. They believe in the unseen. There is a heaven coming. There is goodness coming. And subhanallah, even if the world laughs at you, you're a believer and you know, just like I was somewhere before I was born, I'm going to go somewhere after I die. I was with my creator before I was born and I'm going to return to my creator after I die. And inshallah, I will go to a much better place. But I will live my life to the full extent on condition that it is within what Allah has ordained. And that's why Allah says, those who are muttaqin are the ones who believe in Allah. They pray and they spend from what Allah gave them. Why these two qualities, the quality of prayer? You must pray. We pray five times a day. We should be praying. The reason is it is your link with Allah. You want hope, you want healing, you want cure, you want contentment. How can you achieve that without prayer? How can you achieve contentment that belongs to Allah without connection that is with Allah. Amazing. You need to think of that. So Allah says, on one hand, you must be on the best possible level of relationship with me, your maker. And on the other hand, he says, think about others I've made. 
You're not the only one on earth. If I've blessed you with something, use it to give others. That's why Allah marries the two here. يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون. They spend from that which we gave them. So they give charity and over and above the charity. You see other people in need? Do you feel for them? It will bring about a lot of healing when you sit with those who are broken and try to heal them. You see, you want to be healed? Learn to help others in their difficulties and Allah will help you in your difficulty. That's the message of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you create ease for someone by the help of Allah, the permission of Allah, Allah will create ease for you in this world and the next. If you are trying to give hope to the hopeless, you will be the most hopeful person, subhanAllah. Because we all have emotions, we're all just human beings, we all have days and will have days where we're perhaps low compared to other days. But who will help us? Allah. What will help us? Whatever we've done for the cause of Allah, the sake of Allah. The relationship with Allah will help and what you've done for others will help you too. When you help someone heal, Allah will grant you healing. When you help someone by giving them hope, Allah will help you the day shaitan comes to try and mess with you in order to make you slightly hopeless. Remember this. So it's amazing. You know, we haven't yet progressed so much in this particular series in terms of moving through the pages of the Quran simply because right at the beginning, it's jam-packed with a lot of lessons of healing and hope. But did we ever look at it this way? That's the question. So Allah says, do you believe in the unseen? You'd better do that if you want goodness. And pray because that's your connection with Allah. And take care of others. Spend on them from what Allah gave you. If Allah wanted, he could have turned the tables. So when you're going through hardship, remember it's just Allah. And Allah is testing us. And this is why in the very next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says... Those who believe in what was revealed to you and what was revealed before you and they have full conviction in the hereafter. They are totally convinced about the hereafter. My brothers and sisters, never doubt the hereafter and never doubt the fact that Allah is the most forgiving, the most merciful, the most kind. Subhanallah. So you're going to go back to he who is the most forgiving, the most kind, the most merciful. At least do some deeds that would give him reason to grant you and I paradise and then have hope. And each time you seek the forgiveness of Allah, which should be on a daily basis, have hope that you're totally forgiven. Look forward with clean conviction that you are going back to Allah who is the most merciful. You've tried your best. You're not an angel. You're not perfect. You're just a human. For your heart to heal, you need to make sure you have hope in Allah. That's amazing. Look at how the two are interconnected. You have hope in Allah and that's what will heal you. So when we say verses of hope and healing, the two are interconnected. In order to heal, you need hope. Without hope, you can never heal. Remember this, my brothers and sisters, and therefore believe in the hereafter. Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًا مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Those are the ones who are upon the guidance from their Lord. In Surah Al-Fatiha, remember we asked Allah for guidance? Now Allah is saying, who are the guided ones? They believe in the hereafter. They believe in Allah. They believe in what was revealed. They believe in the unseen. They pray to Allah and they reach out to others in the best possible way. Imagine, honest with Allah, honest with the rest of creation. And Allah says, they are the ones who are upon the real guidance. And they are the ones who will be the ultimately successful. They are the successful. Amazing verses of the Quran. Allah is purifying you, giving you lots of hope that is going to heal you completely. And he's telling you, don't worry, better days are to come. And the best days will follow after your death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from that. Now, if you take a look at the first instruction that Allah has issued in the Quran, verse number 21 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, O people, worship your Lord. Ya rabbakum. O people, worship your Lord. Who is your Lord? The one who created you and created all those before you in order that you achieve the correct relationship with Allah. 
I pray that Allah grant us this beautiful relationship. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد. You're welcome back from that wonderful and interesting segment. But about now, we'll be moving on with matters of faith. Here we get to make clarifications about, you know, issues regarding our faith, Islam, and in general. So let's see what they have to say about it on the street and the clarification by the Imam. And then we'll move to health and wellness, where we get to talk about how to improve our health and well-being by learning different aspects of health tips. And moving on from there will be iBusiness 5.0 tagged Shepherdscape Season 2. Let's see how today's contestants will wow the judges and see if we'll be walking away with a lot of goodie bags. Stay tuned. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Christian marry Muslim. Yeah. Uh -huh. Why not? They are both human, so it, it has to do with feelings. Uh, there shouldn't be uh, boundaries between uh, humans because of your religion, no? I don't, I don't think that should come to play. But me, I'm a Christian, I can marry a Muslim as long as I like her. And that doesn't stop her from going to her mosque. And it doesn't even stop me from going to the Asalatu and sitting down there. And it doesn't stop her from coming to my crusade too. And my children can decide which religion they want to choose. It's left to them. For me, it's not really, it's not really advisable. But it depends on the individuals. That if they can understand each other. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's just because of love we're concerned. Of course not. A Christian cannot marry a Muslim. Okay, because um, for your children, they are definitely going to be confused. And for the wife too, you are, you are expected to submit to your husband. It's either you end up being a Muslim or the both of you conclude which religion to go for? It's not an issue because um, normally what, um, the, what matter, matters most is the love. When there's love, I think it will overcome every other thing. Regarding interfaith marriage, that is marriage between people of one religion and another religion, this has been something that most religions have a problem with. Um, from studies, divorce rates for interfaith marriage are approximately 50% higher than the normal divorce rates of any society, for obvious reasons. Um, from the Islamic perspective, Muslim men are allowed to marry Ahl al-Kitab women who are chaste, in other words, Jews and Christian women who are chaste. In some other religions, they don't accept initiating marriage outside their faith. Um, when it comes to Islamic teachings, the question is then why? One of the reasons that scholars have pro uh, preferred for this is to protect the women. That when it comes to the rights of a woman in Islam, if the husband is a non-Muslim and is not respecting those rights, the Muslim wife cannot take the Christian husband to a Sharia court because Islamic law cannot be put or enforced on a non-Muslim. But if the wife is a Christian and her husband is being abusive, she can take her Muslim husband to a Muslim Sharia court and he can be straightened uh, and uh, judged according to those laws. In most marriages, over 80% of those who take cases to court are actually the women taking their husbands to court. So what we find is even when you've got divorce, when you've got a uh, breakdown, unfortunately it is women who end up being the single parents. It is women who end up being disadvantaged. And so uh, it's actually viewed as a form of legal protection that while on one side you want to build relationship with people of other faiths, so you will have some level of interfaith relations, but not so much as to 
create problems for Muslim women. And so interfaith marriage generally is frowned upon. It is considered makru by most scholars. Some would even want to prohibit it. Others feel marriage is so important that I would only want to marry somebody that I can pray with, somebody that I am completely comfortable leaving my children in her hands uh, or his hands when I pass away. And for that, the question of faith is of vital importance. And so while it may be permissible for Muslim men to marry Christian women, uh, it is one where uh, many Muslim scholars would actually discourage it because of the kind of impact it has on family relations. <laughs>
body immunity against diseases and free radicals. That's why Yoyo Bitters is such a great companion to have around the home, office, and everywhere. Available in liquid, gel, and tablets. Get yours today from the nearest pharmacy or medicine store. Yoyo Bitters, a clean inside out. I'm Rafia Majid Balugu, and I welcome you to yet another edition of Shepherd's Cave on Eye Business, brought to you by Sterling Alternative Finance and supported by Fearless Energy Drinks. This is a business segment dedicated to promoting progressive entrepreneurs and halal businesses. On today's edition, we would not be joining the shepherds in the cave. We'll be having a session with Hassan Uthman from Sterling Alternative Finance, who will be telling us about their fantastic products and services. Please, don't go anywhere. So Sterling Alternative Finance provides a, a more viable option to your conventional bank. So rather than just deal with um, typical things that your bank could give you, Sterling Alternative Finance was formed with providing Nigerians with a more convenient way to live. At Sterling Alternative Finance, we understand that you know, Nigeria is a very cash-centric society. Everything you are involved with, everything you spend on, every business project, everything you pay for has to come in cash. Even if you want to buy a new phone, even if you want to build, even if you want to rent something, you have to pay at once. So we decided to create this bank to provide Nigerians with a more flexible alternative to, to doing business like that. So one of the major differences between Sterling Alternative Finance and a conventional bank is that we help you finance the things you can dream about. So if you want to own a new home today, if you want to purchase a new car, if you want to purchase a new phone for business, the bank can help you finance these products. So the major, two major differences between a non-interest bank and a conventional bank, one is we do not deal in interest. So any transaction, any purchase, any, anything you do with our bank, we don't charge, we're forbidden from charging interest. There's no interest, there's no hidden charges. The second one would be money in the terms of how money is interpreted. So in a conventional bank where money is, you know, how you store wealth, you know, you build on money, we don't do that. We deal with more tangible assets. So we finance stuff for you. So take, for instance, you wanted to, let's say you wanted to build a house for business or you wanted to do something for business. We won't actually give you money to do it. We will be part of that process with you. So we will buy into the process, that, into the project that you're, you're trying to achieve. So we'll help you pay for the house and while you pay us in installments. <music> have it for today and I'm certain you have learned something new and interesting. So are you still delaying on getting an account with Sterling Alternative Finance? Definitely not. Till I see you on our next edition of Shepherd's Cave, please stay safe and of course have a beautiful and fulfilling Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Discovered that altmall.ng has the personalized shopping feature on the website. That means if you are looking for something and you cannot find it, all you need to do is fill the form and a team will get back to you.
Welcome back. If you're just joining us, it's still iBeauty Ramadan TV series. Yeah, welcome back. I hope you found the last segment entertaining. Well, I did. Right now, we're moving on with IQs, where we'll go to the street and explore asking people questions about Islam and exploring the various answers. And then we'll move on with eye twisters, where we play around with Arabic tongue twisters. Right after that will be eye trends, where we talk about, in case you missed it, information and happenings around the world that you might have missed. After that will also be apps and gadget review, where we look into the world of technologies and softwares and see how they could be of use to us for our deen. I hope you find it enlightening. We'll see you right after that. Bakri and Fort Khalifa. Bakri. Ali. Ali. Abu Bakri, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. Okay. Ali, the fort. Yes, the fort. Hey, Abu Bakri. Abu Bakri. Okay. Is that yeah. your final answer, sir? Yes. Okay. I think tick. Talk. Umar. Tick. Umar. Final answer, Umar. That's what I know, sir. That's what you know. Should be Ali Rodialani. Ali who? Ali Rodialani. First, that should be um, Ali. Ali. Is that your right? Final answer? Yes. We have a package for you. Courtesy Right Food Nigeria Limited. Producers of Biggie Drinks, Biggie Sausages, and Fearless Energy Drink. Allah will continue to put Barika in this company. I mean... Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's yet another wonderful, exciting day again. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. My name remains Abdul Rahman, and you know this is the Arabic Tongue Twister, partly brought to you by iBeauty TV. So, today we're here on the street again, you know, asking our Muslim folks questions, telling them some words, and seeing how fast they can say them. The word for today is very simple as usual. Ibadullahi khayrun min ibadi nas, meaning it is better to worship Allah than worshiping man. So let's see how our people are going to fare on the street today. Da 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 da. Ibadullahi khayrun min ibadi nas. Ibadullahi khayrun min ibadi nas. Ibadullahi khayrun min ibadi nas. Ibadullahi farum min ibadullahi run. 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 Like faru me bad lie run, bad lie faru me bad lie run. Well, well, you're trying, but who's running from who? A bad lie harums mini bad nos. A bad lie harums mini bad nos. A bad lie harums mini bad nos. A bad lie harums mini bad. Ah, thank you, Allah Akbar. That's a very good one. I don't remember runs, 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 runs. I bad do I am, I mean, I bad do not. I bad do I am, I mean, I bad do not. I bad do I am, I am 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 not. I bad do I
But Larry will be us. But Larry will be us. But Larry will us. But Larry us. But Larry us. Very good. Very good. Ibadi lie irony. Ibadi not. 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 I'm sure you got a one in your English. I mean irony. You know. Those English uh, grammatical, very, very, very. Irony, 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 Thank you to Monsu Food Company. I really appreciate this, I think. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Adebanjo Hamida and this is iTrends. On iTrends, we'll be sharing with you a recap of news that you probably must have missed on in case you missed it. Also, we'll be moving on to Style Fusion where we'll be sharing with you halal lifestyle, health, beauty, influencers and service providers with their Instagram handles for your use. And then we'll be moving on to Apps and Gadgets Review, where we share with you the latest technology in the Muslim world. And this is in case you missed it. This is the segment where we bring to you news around the Muslim world, just in case you must have missed it. On today's episode, a UK hospital adopts disposable hijabs for its female Muslim doctors. A hospital in the United Kingdom has adopted disposable hijabs for its female Muslim doctors and staffs. In a statement, the Royal Derby Hospital said it was the first hospital in the UK to adopt the disposable hijabs which were introduced by Malaysian origin doctor, Dr. Farah Roseland. Dr. Roseland said the invention was a result of needing to find a middle ground between the Islamic dress code and the passion of being in the operating room. In her interview with BBC Radio Derby, Dr. Roseland said the disposable headscarves provide a solution to infection control concerns relating to hijabs, which are typically worn throughout the day. This is really a welcome development. We hope that the Singaporean government can take a cue from this and therefore review its improved law on hijab for health workers. This is Style Fusion. Are you one of those Muslim sisters that has been searching non-stop for that one-stop shop that provides you with health and beauty services the halal way? Well, I might have a solution for you. Prim and Proper Spa. Prim and Proper Halal is a business that provides halal health and beauty services ranging from hair treatments, including losing your hair, washing, setting, blow drying, texturizing, and even adding oil treatments and lots more. They also provide manicure, pedicure, waxing, halua, henna, and spa services. If you check their Instagram handle at Prim and Proper Spa, they also help to share tips and tricks, fruits, vegetables, and food that help your skin and body grow and function well. That will be all on this episode of Style Fusion. Coming up next, inshallah, is Apps and Gadgets Review. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is App and Gadgets Review, where will we be discussing latest technological inventions in the Muslim world. 
Today on the app trend, we will be looking at the app called Al Quran Memorizer. Memorizing the verses of the Holy Quran is not just for the scholars, it's what every Muslim must attempt. This app is here to make it easy for us. This app has a lot of amazing features which will make you memorize the Holy Quran with ease. You can check out any app store to download this app. And the gadget of the day is the Adhan Clock. The Adhan clock is to remind the Muslims to pray at the right time. As Muslims, Allah has commanded us to pray on time, which the clock serve as a reminder to remind Muslims to observe Salat on time. That will be all on today's episode of App and Gadgets Review. Do not forget to join us again same time tomorrow, inshallah. Masala. Yeah, welcome back. I hope you found the last segment entertaining. Well, I did. And that is how we'll be rounding up today with Islamic rhythm and melodies to soothe your day and help you get through the day. Do not forget, in case you missed out any of this episode, you can catch up with us on our social media handle across your screen right now. It's been wonderful, exciting episode with you all here today. My name is Abdurrahman Idris. And my name is Mariam Ibrahim. Same time tomorrow. Assalam.
darkness into your light My Lord, I'm grateful for your mercy Whenever I fall down, you pick me up Cause you're the one who's always there for me data network. Hey guys, are you a vendor or do you know anyone that sells fashion items, electronics, mobile phone and many more? Altmore gives you access to a wide range of customers across the country. Are you in Lagos, Abuja or Port Harcourt? This platform is actually for you. Guess what? The customer gets to pay us an installment while we would pay you the vendor in full. Sounds amazing, right? Click on the link below today to get started.
und mir so I'll take a big as well. Which of them, sir? Which one is the best? Okay. Let's talk biggie. Let's talk 11 flavors so interesting, so unique, you will think they were made just for you. Maybe something rich, exotic even. Biggie tamarind. Thank you. Okay, let's make sweet even sweeter. Yep, we made a cherry cola. Attitude, please. Thank you. And what if we wanted to make something so amazing? We asked nature herself to help. Biggie Ginger Lemon. You can dance now. Or maybe you just want the best. No questions asked. Biggie So, which one did you want? Thank you. 